This is going to be a tutorial video on how to replace the curved handles on the silver bathroom delta faucet. It'll say delta right down there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, we live here in southern Nevada and the water here is just so filled with calcium deposits that it's just the water is so hard if you just look at that all that calcium stuck or alkali I guess around the uh, faucet there but the reason I'm making this is I looked and looked and looked I found a few things on this specific faucet but I couldn't find anything that got me past getting the handle off so I'll show you the handle next I've got it in some CLR with water right now trying to get out that calcium alkali and then I've got replacement parts here and then I thought I need to make a video because there's just there's not enough information on exactly what to do so I thought I'd make a detailed video um, I'll list the parts below so this handle piece here you have to unscrew this here move this or I'll turn this and show you until this comes out and this side is actually lots easier this is the hot I'm having problems with the cold leaking and it leaks from the handle obviously so that's what I am I'm replacing I believe these are called the valve stems I'm replacing the valve stems so that piece sticks out there and just goes back in here and then turns of course clockwise until you screw it back in and then the way to get these little handles off is you need a specific Allen wrench. I believe it's a 3.30 seconds. And I mean, I have, I bought a box of Allen wrenches. And of course, none of them work unless you buy the specific Allen wrench. It's replacement part number on the website is replacement part or RP26853. Um, I believe it's a, what did I say, 330 seconds or something like that. Uh, I'll verify that in the links below so that you know. Maybe you happen to have this size around, but I'm betting not. I'm betting you got to order it directly from Delta. I think I got I actually got mine from um, Amazon. Of course, it's through Delta, and it was like <laughs> six bucks for this. It fits directly in that hole there on each handle and gets out your little gets out that little hex nut there which has also got some calcium on it and uh, then you can remove the handle the problem is if you live in an area with hard water like I do the handle doesn't come off so easy nobody really showed you any videos on how to do it so I thought I would make one just real quick here but I will try to be as detailed as possible whoa that's another tip make sure you have one of these nets inside your sink drain when you're doing this because losing a piece like that would just suck okay so the valve stem part for this specific model is RP 25513 and I'm going to undo this nut here with my crescent and then I'm going to replace that part and then turn the water back on and normally you don't I, I've got it turned off at the demarcation point outside I've actually got a water tea tool and I uh, turned it off so I have no water in the whole house right now which is really annoying but um, usually you can just turn off the valve stems you know I, I'll show you this because it's too dark over there if you've ever done any kind of plumbing you know what that is that's just you know if your toilet's gonna overflow you turn that and the valve stop and it'll shut the water off well unfortunately like I said both mine the hot and cold are stuck. They're stuck solid. These are rings. Replacement part 6130. I'll open this up and show you the rings. I wasn't sure exactly what was wrong with it, so I just ordered a bunch of replacement parts. But they're all connected to this specific model here. So there's an O-ring. Replacement part 6130 and also a plastic cap of some type so that's replacement part 6130 these are springs and another rubber stopper there replacement part 
4993. This is replacement part 13938. 13938. Three, 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 Smaller um, rubber washers, and there's three of them in here. They're the same size. And now I've got my handle soaking in some CLR and water mix. So you can see that gigantic chunk of calcium alkali in there. No wonder the handle wouldn't come off. It was almost welded on. So the things I read about heat and soaking in CLR, those would work. Now, well, I didn't do that. I, I uh, took a chance and just wedged it off. One thing I did find that helped, and I read this online, in this position here, it wouldn't come up. Once you turned it so it was facing you, I took a screwdriver flathead and just got underneath it and wedged it up slowly. And I kept twisting, but ultimately it came up in this position when it was facing me. That's what I used was a flathead screwdriver. And just ever so gently went around like that until I pried it up and it popped off. All right, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is get yourself some channel locks and take this nut off here. Oh man, that is on there. You can see the calcium build up on that as well. It's just years and years of hard water coming through there. Oh, that sucker is on there. Oh, I moved the whole unit. If you do that, you're going to have to go below and when you're finished and tighten everything up. Put that in your can of CLR and water. Now, at long last, we can remove, hopefully, the stem, which is what was causing the problem in the first place. To turn. It's just stuck like everything else. Well, there it goes. You can see it's definitely worn. Got alkali and calcium destroying it. So, the only two parts you really need to replace this sucker, the handles anyways, are the replacement part package RP4993. And that's for the seat and the spring that goes down in there underneath the handle, underneath the stem. And then the other part is just the valve stem replacement part R2551, RP25513. You don't need all this other junk that I got. It looks like the uh, washer comes with the valve stem. So you can see they look the same. Got that half moon shape on the bottom. Since mine was so hard to get out, I did not pay attention to what orientation the valve stem was sitting there, and that's very important, so I'm going to have to finagle with it a bit. As a matter of fact, the only other video that helped at all was uh, a YouTube video. I'll, I'll include the link. It's a guy named Jeff Patterson, and he does this same model and shows you pretty pretty good how to, how to replace the handle. The only thing he doesn't go into is what if you live in an area with extremely hard water. And, you know, his pieces come out quite easily. Not, not in this case, not in my case. This, is, this whole thing's been a nightmare. So I thought I'd just maybe do an addition to his video, but definitely check out his video that's Jeff Patterson on the Delta faucet. It's really helpful. Uh, now we just have to replace the seat and the spring down in there. So we've got to take your needle nose pliers and pull out. Well, there's the seat. Of course, the spring didn't come with it. So you can see there, there's the old seat and the old spring and that Jeff Patterson guy informs you put the the fat end down first so this goes the uh, hollow end there goes up over the top and then you push the whole thing down into underneath the uh, valve stem so that will go in first I want to show you the replacement this is the uh, replacement part like I said RP4993 
So take your seat, place it over your spring, and try to get it down there in that hole without it coming loose. Needle nose pliers, very helpful for this. Well, I'm going to try the spring first and then the seat because I can't seem to get them to stick together. Here we go. Just kind of push that down with your finger. Now for the new stem. Whatever happened to that rubber ring? Maybe it just disintegrated over the years. But it's nice to know that the replacement part comes with it so you don't need to buy separate little washer rings. So there are grooves in the side of your stem. You can see the plastic, the plastic, uh, there's grooves in the handle there, but there are in the actual faucet, but there's little plastic um, pieces sticking out here. And obviously you want those pieces to go in these grooves but it can go in one of two ways so I think that's how mine went in I hope that I'm right so we're gonna go like this I think that's good now we're going to put back the nut that's holding the stem to the faucet that's in my CLR mix your channel locks okay I got my pieces all cleaned here got all the uh, calcium alkali water marks off of them even the bolts look better that CLR is pretty amazing stuff especially if you live out here with hard water for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about it's just CLR calcium lime rust get it at a hardware store or Walmart it's really helpful uh, maybe there's something better out there but that's what I use just cut with some water so I'm ready to finally put all this back together here. Got the stem in. We got the nut down tight. Um, I've tightened the faucet underneath it so it doesn't move. Now, this piece is fairly clean as well. You can see in there, got most of the alkali calcium out of there. This was on this way when I took it off. But just kind of move it around until you can feel that it should slide down. Well, that can't be right. It never turned that far. So we are doing something wrong. I assume it's not sitting in its seat all the way for it to turn like that. It should stop here like this one does back but we got something wrong because this goes all the way to the left okay found the solution found the problem I wasn't paying attention that's what happened but if you look at these two valve stems you can see that one has the old one has this white plastic part goes about halfway around the unit and the new replacement part RP25513 only goes about a quarter or a third of the way around the unit so that's what this little piece of plastic is for Delta probably decided why build two models when we can build one and just add a little attachment piece so that's why it was turning an extra quarter too far to the left the handle so this piece simply slides in here got the moon to the left, the crescent shape to the left crescent shape to the left this piece here now they look pretty much alike except obviously one is new and one is old so that's the problem there you need to add that attachment piece if you've got this model so, 
We had this right the first time. Just didn't have our attachment piece on. That goes in there like that. Now it won't feel like it sits down all the way. You know, I guess because we need this nut on here to hold it and kind of when you, when you get this going on there tight, it'll it'll really clamp down that. Okay, I don't know how this was on so tight before, but I think it was kind of alkali calcium dawn. So Okay, you just gotta finagle with it a bit, but I've got it down. It turns this way to the right and stops, and this way to the left and stops. So the real test will be to see if this thing actually still leaks. We gotta put in our little hex nut. The pointed end goes in, it's slightly pointed. some extra torque on this. Okay. That's on there good. This part in next. And now for the ultimate test. No water leaking around the base. It was coming out of the handle here from behind it, and I don't see any leak. A lot of times I'll take a paper towel or a piece of toilet paper and just set it there and see if it gets wet, let the water run for a bit. I think we did it. Good job. Hope this helps some of you out. Still dry. Well, a little CLR, some TLC, some elbow grease, and this old 10-year-old Delta faucet don't look too bad. Just got a regular scrubby here, and like I said, some CLR with cut with water, about half and half. Just let it soak for a bit, and then just kind of went over it with a semi-rough uh, scrubby. And it got most of the calcium and alkali deposits out. Doesn't look too bad. Right, thanks for watching. Comment and like if this helped you out. Thanks.